This is part six in our short crash course video series on editing photos so you can understand how the photo editor and computer thinks so you can edit your photos and make them awesome. We're not looking at tools. We're looking at basic concepts. This software is GIMP 2.10 but it should carry over to Photoshop because it's, it's about the basic ideas of editing. You get this, it'll be so much easier for you to learn other things. Now here we've got Kate Manzamo in Japan. And let's just say that this was pulled from a screen capture in a video. So let's say this was part of a video. It's not, but let's say that it was. And I wanted to make it look like uh, I can click on it and play it because uh, I, I, I want to do something and I need to do that. So I, I've got my, my picture here that I want to make it look like a video play button. And I'm going to get my play button. So here's a play button. We looked at that kind of in the last video. You can get this play button by downloading it from the Inkverb GitHub profile. This is Inkverb slash icons at github.com right there. There should be a link in the description. It's right there. There's a, there's a red play button and a smoke play button. We'll look at both. Now, this is an SVG file, which we looked at in the last video. So this can get much smaller and much bigger. So I'm going to drag it in here like this, but it's going to ask me how big I want it to be because it can be any size. It's a scalable vector graphics file, an SVG file. See, right there, see, SVG. Okay. Well, I don't need it that big. My, my whole image here is what, 4,000 pixels wide. So let's see, I need uh, maybe a tenth of it. Let, let's, let's try 400 as a guess. And, and so that, that's 10%. See what that looks like. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit uh, small. So I could, excuse me, press Control Z, undo it. We'll, we'll try again. Maybe, uh, maybe I want, uh, well, okay, why not 900? Oh, look at that. So there we go. Now it looks like, like it's part of a video and if I click on it, it'll play. And maybe it's a link to another YouTube video and this is going to go on my website because I don't want to embed YouTube in my website for whatever reason. Uh, it could slow down my website or whatever. So I'm, I'm, you know, I've got my picture here. Now if I want to save it, I'll go to File. Now in GIMP, I have to export. I can't save as. This is, this is a special thing about GIMP. If I do save as, then it will change the name, but it will save it as an XCF file, or it's like a GIMP editing file, and it's used by others. It's, it's got all these special photo editor settings. It's not an image for a website. If I wanted to export this file, if I wanted to save this as a normal photo, I would go to export, and, and I can choose my file extension. Now, I could save it as a PNG, but I don't want to because it's a photograph. I'll save it as a JPEG. So if I, if I clicked uh, Manzamo, here we'll, we'll, we'll call it, I got to change the name, Manzamo Play JPEG. Click Export. It's going to give me my JPEG dialog options. Here's my JPEG quality. 95 is good. I maybe might like 96. Okay, so I export that. Now, here it is. This is the file I just got. There it is. If I double click on it, there I'm in the image viewer, and that's the file. And that's a that's a pretty. It's got good quality. If I if I zoom in, I get some pixels, but it's not bad. I don't see JPEG artifacts. And 95, 96 was good. Now, part of the purpose of this video here is to look at layers. So here I've what I've got is. I've, I've got a play button as a layer and you see that checkered background that that's indicating that it's clear there's nothing there if I hid this photograph those checkers in the background mean that there's nothing there and and the, the corners of this this play button file are transparent they're, they're they're empty they're invisible there's nothing there now I could take the opacity here and make this button semi-transparent. Let's just see what that looks like. If I turned it down. Look at that. See? Now, I don't suggest doing that, but you, you, you could. Uh, now, maybe you don't like this red play button and you want to use the smoke play button. I, okay, I just, I hit the button still there, but I just hit it. Let's, let's bring in our smoke play button. Bring it in. The other one was 900. We'll do the same thing here. 
Now that play button, this is uh, th this image is already transparent. See that 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 play button you can already kind of see through a little bit. So um, you know m maybe it looks good, maybe it doesn't. Watch this. If I duplicate that that semi-transparent, but it's already transparent. The opacity is all the way up, but I can see through it because the the file itself you can suck somewhat see through because of its settings. If I duplicated it, it would be compounded on top of itself. It's still a little bit transparent, but not quite as much. If I duplicate it again, I got three of the same semi-transparent files on top of each other. I've got that, excuse me. Okay. So I, I just took this, this very transparent light button here, that this small image, and I made it easier to see by just stacking a bunch of them up. And those are my layers there. Now, I'm not sure how much you grasp about these layers, but it, 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 you could play with it, I suppose. So, so watch this here. If, if I turned off these smoky buttons and I've got only my red button here, well, that's semi-transparent. I, I want that all the way up. If I drag my Manzamo image above that, it'll be on top, and so I can no longer see the play button underneath. Okay, well, Let's say that, that I wanted a strange montage of, of different photos. I'll put my, my play button back up here on top and, and it, let's, let's say that I, I, I wanted to make my own custom YouTube artwork. Well, I don't need any of my play buttons, so you know honestly, I'm just going to click to delete all of those. I've got my Manzamo JPEG here. Let's say I wanted a picture of a Mon Kate Manzamo and then I wanted, uh, I wanted a picture in the woods. Let's say this is my Asia vacation travel video montage. So I just dragged in West Peak here, and I've got Manzamo down here, but one's on top of the other. Okay, so we've got two layers. I could bring this one on top, and now that one's on top. I can't see the one below it. Well, how do I cut this so I can see what's below it? Well, there's a nice nifty little tool over here. I could use something like Select. Now in, in GIMP, it gives me a menu. I right click and I can choose similar tools. They, they, they're grouped so you don't, you don't, you're not looking at a thousand tools over here on your left. They're, they're grouped into similar tools. And another nice thing about GIMP is it shows hotkeys. So for example, R would give you the rectangle tool and E would give you the ellipse tool. So let's say that I, I choose the ellipse tool. I can click on it or press E. If I went like this and made a circle like an oval that starts off of the screen and brought it down. You know, we'll play with it here a little bit. I don't want to delete the elephant nose there on, on Kate Manzamo. So I've just selected this area and I'm working only in that area. I could do a lot with this. Okay, I, I probably could make another layer and call it what I want. Okay, so I made another layer, called it what I want, layer. And I could take a, a paintbrush, and this is selected, so I'm only working in the selected area. So I could draw inside it, but if I go to the edge, I'm not drawing outside of it because I'm only working in the selected area. So I could, I could do some type of painting there, I suppose. I don't know who would actually do this, but you know, it's, it's how the tool works. That's handy. Well, I'm going to press undo because I don't want that. I'm going to press it again because I don't need that layer. I've selected just this corner. Now if I press the delete button, it just deleted that part of the JPEG. Now what's going on here? Why can't I see West Peak underneath? Shouldn't if, if I delete that part, can I see it underneath? Well no, because it's a JPEG and JPEG files can't have transparency. So I've got to tweak this photo editor to make it look at the photograph the way I want to see it. So I'm going to press Control Z. I don't want to delete that. I'm going to press I'm going to press R for the rectangle tool because I want to unselect this. So I'm, I'm going to press R and then just click somewhere. Now I'm no longer selecting. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a new layer, call it layer. I'm going to put it down in the very bottom, and I'm going to take this. West Peak, okay. Control A for select all. 
control C for copy. I'm going to go down to my layer here that is transparent already and I'm going to control V, paste it down, it's very standard. It's floating, I'm in GIMP, so I have to click somewhere so that it will anchor it. Click, now it's set. Now this is my West Peak photo, that's my original, I'm going to pull it down here, hide it, I'm not using it. Here, we'll call this West Peak, no JPEG extension. Now we're going to go do the same thing for Manzamo, so you watch me do this again. Click the new layer button. Yeah, I'll call it layer, that's fine, usually you just click OK. I'm going to go to Manzamo, view it, turn on the viewer so I can see it, Control A for, for select all, Control C for copy. Click on that new layer so I'm working there now. Control V to paste it. It's floating. Now, and, and, and here's a funny thing. If I hide the top one, okay, I can actually move this around. See? It's floating. That part of the image is floating. Well, I don't want it floating. I'm going to undo Control Z, undo my, my way back to where I first was. Okay? It's floating, so I have to click, not hovering over it to move it, but I go off the image where the anchor appears, click that to anchor it and put it down. I'm going to hide, it's already hidden, hide my image here, pull it down, it's there for reference, and we'll call this one Manzamo. Now I've got my two editable images here pasted onto a transparency. So now I could take, for example, my ellipse tool. I could select a round section in a corner of Manzamo, press delete, and I will now see what's under in West Peak. I see that part of the photo. Isn't that nifty? So I, there are lots of other ways I could do this. So I, let, let, let's say uh, I, I don't want to delete that. We'll, we'll, we'll press Control Z, and then I'll, I'll press R, my universal rectangle tool. Click down, so I'm no longer selected. And clicking off off of in, in, off of the canvas working area. I'm going to use my lasso tool, and I could click here to start. Just move it down. Click again to establish my line. And then I'm just going to click around the picture and come back where I started. Now I've selected that area. Now if I press delete on my keyboard, boom. Oops, excuse me. It, it, it deleted the wrong layer. I, was, I, I, was, I had selected. I could see this up here, but I, I had selected this layer, so that's where I was working. So you, you can see that you can see the transparency area there. I just delete it. So I'm going to press Control Z. I'm going to slowly move back there. Now it reappeared. I'm going to click on the correct layer. I'm still selected because I haven't clicked anywhere. I'm going to press Delete. And now I've got a nice little angle. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, click to deselect. And, and now I've, I've taken different parts of a picture and I put them together. Now. One other little secret I could I could use. What, what if I do Control Z? So I'm, I've reselected the area. I went back. I've reselected this area. What if What if I don't want to delete that part of the photo? What if I want West Peak on top, and I want to delete all this? Well, I can invert my selection. So I'm going to undo my delete. I'm going to go to select and I'm going to click invert because this is like this area is selected. So this is my menu for selecting and I'm going to click invert. Watch this. It changed from selecting this area to selecting this area. Well, I don't want to delete the, the elephant rock at Manzamo. I want to delete West Peak. So I'm going to press delete here and I deleted that part of West Peak. Now I'm just going to click off of my canvas so I deselect, we can see what it looks like, and I achieved the same thing. 